Assalamu alaikum dear viewers, peace be upon you all. Welcome to our brand new show on Imam Hussain TV called Insight to Karbala. This brand new show, we are going to seek to delve into different aspects on the story of Ashura that took place on Karbala. There are several ways the story can be broken down and every single episode we will dedicate to one aspect of the story that we can learn from and talk about uh, openly. Today's episode, we're going to start from the beginning on who was Hussein before Karbala. Many of us, understandably so, know the Hussein on the day of Ashura and afterwards. But who was this person before this tragedy took place? What was his status? What were the moments where he stood out with certain things he did in his life? To discuss this on our opening show, we have some guests. We've got Sayyid Ali Nawab, we've got Sayyid Mohsin Shah, and we've got Ibrahim Ansari to provide some poetry as well as add to the discussion. Say that I mentioned in my intro that it's understandable that the Imam is saying that we know is the one on the day of Ashura yeah. because this is the moment where the climax happened of his life, what he was born to do in that essence. Um, so two questions is why is it important to know the years before this happened and secondly who was Hussein? It's a very very big question but who was this person um, post, uh, pre Ashura? Bismillah ar rahman ar rahim Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa sallallahu ala Muhammad wa alihi al-tayibin al-tahirin Allahumma salli ala Muhammad Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa alihi Muhammad wa al-anatullah ala adai wa jama'in ila abadi al-abidin As you said brother, it is understandable why people when they hear the name of Imam Hussain alayhi salam they quickly remember Karbala and Ashura It's because uh, Imams of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam and before them the Holy Prophet of Islam before the Prophet of Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed a great emphasis on the event of Ashura. And they drew people or they pulled people towards the event of Ashura and what happened on the plains of Karbala. But it's equally as important for us to come and understand who was Imam Hussein alayhi salam because when we stand in front of the shrine or the burial site of Imam Hussein and we do the, the ziyara or the salutation of Imam Hussein, it is always recommendable to know who you are visiting. Because the riwayah or the hadith says, Man zara al-Husayn arifan bihaqqihi. Mm. Now, arifan bihaqqihi doesn't come from Karbala alone. Or the Imam in Mashhad, for example, Imam al rada Or, for example, other Imams, when you visit Imam Ali alayhi salam in Najaf or Imam uh, Musa ibn Ja'far in Ka'zamiyyah or the rest of the Imams, when you stand before them, you must know um, in what circumstances they were born, when they were born, what they did during their life, mm. not only that major event that they um, were known for. So in regards with Imam Hussein alayhi salam, prior to the birth of Imam Hussein, Rasulullah uh, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam informed the people about the tragedy of Karbala. He was known to have been seen to be weeping and crying before, years before the birth of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. So Jibrail comes down, informs the Holy Prophet that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to grant you a grandchild. His name is going to be Hussein and this is what's going to happen to him. And Rasulullah cries and weeps and the companions, uh, Muhajirin and Ansar sitting around him, they see, they observe the Prophet of Allah, the Messenger, the infallible, the greatest person on the face of this earth suddenly started crying. Of course, when Jibrail alayhi salam sometimes speaks to the Holy Prophet, it's uh, sound heard only by Rasulullah. The people around him, they can't see Jibrail. 
or sometimes Jibreel used to come in and enter upon the Holy Prophet in the in the shape and form of Dihya al Kalbi, for example, a uh, known in, uh, personality. So sometimes they used to know what's happening, and sometimes no. The Rasulullah had to explain to them that this is what's going to happen. So Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Uh, specifically, other than the Imams of the Ahlul Bayt, the rest of the Imams, he had a speciality. Why? Because, uh, as I said um, previously uh, in other programs, that uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa wasallam he prepared the Ummah, the nation, for the happening of Ashura mm -hmm. prior to the birth of Imam Hussein, on the birth of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, and in the five or six years. Of where the Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam had Imam Hussein around him. Imam Hussein alayhi salam was an individual that, in his first years around Rasulullah, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi used to feed Imam Hussein. Imam Hussein is still young. Fatima Zahra alayhi salam, in some narrations, she fed Imam Hussein until the milk dried out. Rasulullah, it is observed. As it is mentioned in the riwayat, that he used to place his thumb or one of his fingers in the in the mouth of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, and the riwayah says Imam Hussein used to take in from that action what he needs for two or three days. So the fla the flesh and blood of Imam Hussein alayhi salam was from Rasulullah, and some people say when Rasulullah says Hussein minni is that I have brought up Hussein. And I'm guessing this uh, this feeding is also symbolic that he's Sim also getting the wisdom. Exactly. Feeding is, is uh, symbolic and also uh, the physical feeding. Yes, two-way. Yes. Mm -hmm. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi used to place his, his lips or his tongue upon the lips of Hussein mm -hmm. salam, as he used to do with his father, Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib. And through that, he used to give the ilm and the wisdom. Where Amir al Mu'minin alayhi salam says, Alamani Rasulullah alpha babid min al ilm yiftahli min kulli bab alf bab. Similar to Imam Hussein alayhi salam, Rasulullah educated Imam Hussein. So if you ask where Imam Hussein received his education, I would say he received it directly from the person that received the revelation. Mm. So this is the knowledge, this is the upbringing of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. In other instances, before the event of Karbala, Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Uh, with the presence of his father because he was with his grandfather for about five or six years it's in some narration seven years and then with his mother Fatima to Zahra again for a year or two after the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi wa alihi wa sallam uh, sorry a couple of months, months yeah. after the demise of Rasulullah with his father Amir al Mu'mineen he was for um, 35 years if I'm not mistaken with his brother Hassan an extra 10 years yeah. and then his imamate was for 10 years as well mm. so in this process with the presence of Imam Ali with the presence of Imam Hassan it doesn't mean that he didn't do it much but he was uh, not in the limelight yes. as his father Amir al mumineen yeah. or in the imamate of Imam Hassan yeah. alayhi salam and we'll, we'll get to his imamate afterwards but I want to bring in our other two guests and let's delve into history here um, and I'll keep repeating myself. Understandably, Ashura is the day we remember Imam Hussein for the most. Um, can both of you shed some light on an incident or a story, even a narration that Imam said way before Ashura that stands out or that the viewers should know about? Say what you can know first. I mean, with, with Abu Abdullah al Hussein, I mean, there's many stories, uh, you know, the famous ones are like, you know, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa used to pray, he'd hit mount on, on yes. him. And uh, you know, Jibreel would tell uh, Rasul to extend his uh, sujood. There will be other stories of, of, of miracles. Of um, there was there was a famous one where um, how the, how Imam Hassan Imam Hussain taught the old man how to do wudu. The wudu, yeah. Um, so there's many many stories, but uh, an, an event, an incident that sticks out for me is when Imam Hassan is is attacked, um, and this is when there is a this is before the treaty with Muawiyah. There's about to be a war, and people are. You know, preparing for war, and, and they had actually they head towards uh, Syria, and during the camp, Imam Hassan's camp turns on him because they don't want to fight anymore. They've had enough of fighting with with Imam Ali and so forth. So they they attack him while he's in prayer, and Imam Hussein is the only one there to defend him. And in this attack, in this ambush, 
Imam Hassan's actually stabbed in the leg. Yes. And the reason it sticks out for me is that, oh, it's like Imam, Imam Hassan was there to uh, protect his brother and he was there to, to, to fight off uh, the enemies and, and, and to protect his Imam. But then what happens later on in Karbala? Mm. You know, there's no one there to protect him. There's no one there to stop, mm. you know, the sword <laughs> slashing him. So that event really sticks out for me. Mm. Um, in, in Imam Hussein's life. Ibrahim, what about you? Um, so you asked for an event and or a narration. Yes. Um, in terms of uh, the first event that really stands out um, is his actual birth. Yes. As Sayyid mentioned. So I'm not going to get in detail of that because Sayyid mentioned it. Uh, the narration that stands out for me uh, is a very powerful narration by Imam Al Hussein alayhi wa sallam where he says, Amiyat Ainun la taraka alayha raqiba. May your eye be blinded that does not see you overseeing the person. So the eye of a person that doesn't see you overseeing. May that eye be blinded. As for an event that I will then mention now, is before he actually left um, Medina, uh, when they were trying to force him to pay allegiance to Yazid, his stance was unbelievable. His stance was truly unbelievable. He described all the bad acts of Yazid. He drinks alcohol, he gambles, he, he, he. And then he said, someone like me will never pay allegiance to someone, someone. like him. Absolutely. So Powerful. And, and before that, uh, now he would say that the Imam was, you know, at the time of his Imamate and he was, he had Bani Hashim around him and he was uh, at an older age. Yeah. But Imam Hussein alayhi salam, he was that strong in his, in his actions and in his uh, belief that even he done that when he was younger. Mm. Mm. At the time of the, 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 se the second ruler, when he um, stole Khilafah, he, Imam Hussein alayhi salam entered the Masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and he noticed that person sitting on the pulpit. Mm. He's speaking and there's hundreds of people, Muslims sitting, listening to whatever he wanted to say, if he had anything to say. So he, Imam Hussein alayhi salam came, came until he reached the pulpit. Now the Muslims are observing Hussein, the grandson of the Holy Prophet, what is he going to do? He came, he went up the pulpit, he stood in front of him, in front of all the Muslims, and said to him, Inzil min ala min mm. Now you're not talking about a normal person sitting on the pulpit, you're talking about someone who has assumed himself as a leader of the Islamic Ummah. Mm. And who is speaking to him? Regardless of them knowing this is Hussein, this is a, a youngster standing on the pulpit, come down from the pulpit of my father and my grandfather. Wasa'ad mm. ala min abik. Go elsewhere and sit on the pulpit that your father used to have. Mm -hmm. And this guy, out of stupidity, he came out and said, my father doesn't have a pulpit. <laughs> <laughs> Which gives another In clue yeah. that what you have taken is not the yours. Rules, yeah. mm -hmm. This is mine and my father's. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, at that time, a sign and signal was that whoever sits on the pulpit is the ruler oh, and no, is yeah. the khalifa. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So this is another interesting yeah. stance from the life of Imam Hussein yeah. Ali. Hussain. I think yeah, I think we can. There, there's so much. We'll delve into more of it. I mean, two things stick out. We and I think everything links to Karbala. I mean, we, we can't help it. But the relationship with Abbas, I think, pre Karbala is also sets the foundation. I think uh, a, a very uh, one that's. I don't think it's ignored actually, but we forget that Dua al Arafah came from Imam Hussein. Mm -hmm. um, one of the most beautiful pieces of pieces of theology. Um, in any walk of life uh, to fall in love with the person himself um, this is if you want to learn about god you look at dua arfa and this is something imam Hussein did independent of karbala itself um, and we're going to have as per usual uh, on the format of the show what we're going to do in this show is halfway through the show we usually have a, a poetry and we end with a eulogy so it's time for the poetry and we're going to ask brother ibrahim to recite some poetry um, so i'm going to take you to another event before karbala which is his debat departure which is usually recited yes. about. Um, and as Imam Hussein is leaving his ill daughter Fatima, at night a caravan was leaving in pain. Prophet's, ma Prophet's family followed their lead Hussein. Imam Hussein bid his hometown farewell, forced to leave his beloved daughter unwell. As a lover, Submitted to Allah's will, renewing his grandfather's campaign. Hussein was devoted, yet Hussein was devo devoted and full of charisma. 
declared refusal to Yazid's schema, humiliation far from the son of Fatima. He does not submit to any tyrant's reign. Fatima was like her grandmother alone. She felt ill, fearful and out of tone, losing her dear ones with whom she has grown proved to be worse than any physical pain. City of the Prophet was deep in darkness. Hussein's departure has turned it so heartless. Its noble family was shuttered, faultless. For years, Medina did not see peace nor gain. The princess kept waiting for their return. Patience made her tender heart slowly burn. She knew her father to death had to adjourn. Because Hussein acted in strength. Not Wayne, because Hussein acted in strength, not Wayne. Subhanallah. Thank you very much. Uh, to move the discussion forward, um, saying a reminder of a narration by the Prophet, peace be upon him and his family, where he says, uh, Hassan and Hussein are Imams, whether they are standing or sitting. Yes. I want you to ask an uh, interesting question. How does it work when you have two Imams who are alive at the same time. So when Imam Hassan and Imam Hussain were alive at the same time, was Imam Hassan the Imam of Imam Hussain, or were they both Imam at the same time? Uh, how does the Imamate work there? Okay. Um, just to add a small point yes. to the narration you just narrated, of course Rasulullah, at the time that he was alive and Imam Hassan and Imam Hussain were alive, they were youngsters. Yes. And at many times, um, Rasulullah used to look for uh, specific uh, movements or specific times to attract the Muslims towards Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein and also to say a saying. For example, when Imam Hassan or Imam Hussein was seen to be playing with the rest of the kids in the streets of Medina, Rasulullah used to come and hug Imam Hussein alayhi salam, take Imam Hassan, sit him on his lap and say, Hussein uh, minni wa ana Hussein. That narration has been narrated whilst Rasulullah was walking in the streets of Medina and Imam Hussein was busy playing and the Prophet said that Hussein on minni wa ana min Hussein. Ahabbalah man ahabba Husayna. Whoever loves me has to love Hussein. And whoever loves me is automatically loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here uh, you asked me about what happens or how does it work when there are two Imams at the same time. Of course, um, in, in, uh, in the level of hierarchy with the Imams, uh, Imam Hussein, uh, out of his position and the uh, place that he has, is better than the rest of the Imams after him. But what happens when there are Imams before him? Yes. Uh, of course, Rasulullah is better than Amir al Mu'minin, Amir al Mu'minin is better than uh, Hassan alayhi salam, and Hassan, Imam Hassan is better than Imam Hussein. Because not only he is his older brother, but he is an Imam before him. So at the time of the Imamat of Imam Hassan alayhi salam, it is the duty of Imam Hussein alayhi salam to follow the Imam before him, which is Imam Hassan alayhi salam. Obviously, there's no, um, we have to add that they'll never conflict anyway. Um, no, they never yeah. conflicted. They are all the same yeah. from the beginning until the end, from Rasulullah, from Amir al Mu'mineen, until Imam al Mahdi alayhi salam, kulluhum nurun wahid. They are all one nur. They are all one. Isn't, isn't, one there, isn't there a narration? I think I read once that um, I don't know who narrates it. Uh, the first is Muhammad, the last is Muhammad, and those in between are Muhammad. Yes, awaluna Muhammad, wa awsatuna Muhammad, wa akhiruna Muhammad, bal kulluna Muhammad. We are all Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So here, in knowledge-wise, they are all the same, and level-wise, they are all the same, but there is a, yes. a point of hierarchy that one should observe. Uh, as I said, Imam Hassan alayhi salam, when he was the Imam, uh, Imam, he, his opinion is the opinion of Imam Hussein. Uh, Imam Hussein's action would have been the same as the decision at that time of Imam Hussein when he uh, done this agreement or treaty yes. between uh, Muawiyah and between himself. So, but the times give us different mm. uh, responsibilities or different actions by the imams Hence, themselves. Imam while sitting or standing. Yes, Imam and Qama, if they are in peace or if they are in, in war, yeah. they are the same. So if we, swip, if we swap positions, Imam Hassan would have gone to Karbala and Imam Hussain would have been the peace Yes, position. according to the time, according yes. to the situation, situation, they would have dealt with the same situation the same way as Imam Hassan okay, or Imam Hussain. Thank you. Uh, one of the final points I want to look at is when we go to actually to Ashura and when Imam Hussain died. Obviously, 
a very sorrowful moment and understandably Imam Hussain is very very thirsty very weak at the time um, he's took all the bodies and it's his turn and sometimes the literature and the way we portray Imam is at that moment in time and I say that specifically he was a very he was very very weak um, physically speaking I want to go backwards to Imam's role as actually a very skilled fighter because yes in Karbala he was killed but if we go to the Battle of Safin for example and other moments before uh, Ashura when Imam Ali was alive for example Imam Hussein was actually a very very good skilled warrior as well because of who his father was so it wasn't do we need to remember that Imam wasn't just someone that was just killed and you know wasn't a good swordsman he actually he was a very very skilled fighter as well I mean when it comes to fighting um, you know, it is mustahab that you know one a, a male should learn how to horse ride, how yes. to do archery. Uh, Rasulullah sallallahu used to really encourage wrestling and swimming. So physical fitness and the, you know uh, combat uh, is is. I mean, we we are a peaceful religion, but you know, we have to defend ourselves. Now, when it comes to Imam Hussein, do you know how many of the uh, the, mil the, uh, the opposition Imam Hussein killed in, yeah. in Karbala? Now, some say there was 30,000 of them, 70,000 of them, 80,000 of them. Imam Hussein and his camp managed to kill 11,000. Mm. Now, now, let me ask you this. How can 72 men take on an army of 30,000 minimum and kill 11,000? Mm. And it wasn't just his, it, because of his bravery and the way he fought. It was also because of his um, tactics, because of, the, of, of his, 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 you know, his strategy yeah. towards war. Um, the, the people were thinking, how could he do that? Uh, one of the main strategies and tactics he used was stampedes. So they would come to attack him and then he would leash out, uh, you know, with his attack. Mm. And they would get scared and they would turn around. And then so many are coming to attack, so many are turning around, it would cause a stampede and that's how he killed so many of them. And furthermore, when they were fighting in one-on-one -on -one, uh, armed combat, they, 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 were, they, were, they were threatened and they were scared because he resembled his father so much even in combat. And Imam mm. Ali is what they call the champion warrior yeah. of, of Arabia, where people used to write his name on their swords in honor of him. Yeah. So let's not forget that, yes, Imam Hussein was killed. And, um, you know, there, there is, you know, destiny and there is, you know, mm. uh, also that he had to return to his Lord. Mm -hmm. But you know, one thing to add to what Sayyid was saying is that uh, Amir al-Mu'mineen, alayhi salam, he used to of course, take him up, Hassan Imam Hussein with him to all the battles. Yeah. Uh, Jamal, Safin, Nahrawan. And he used to give them roles. He used to say, Imam Hussein, you are in charge of the, the horse uh, riders on the right, Al Maymana. Well, Hassan, alayhi salam, Al Maysara. For example, Muhammad ibn Hanafi, uh, he was known to be uh, participating. Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr also yes. participating in the battle. So Imam used to uh, give them responsibilities because they were. Uh, individuals that the Imam relied upon because they were good army and mm -hmm. skilled individuals. Mm -hmm. And also Imam Hussein alayhi salam and specifically Abul Fadl al-Abbas on the day of Ashura, they used to strike once and kill the opponent. Mm -hmm. So they used to uh, ride their horse in the middle of the army like Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam with one strike left and right they used to kill a couple of individuals mm. so th many of the enemies used to be killed in that manner mm. so Imam Hussein alayhi salam and the children of Amir al-Mu'mineen they were brought up in a manner where they were very skilled in the battlefield like their father Amir mm. al-Mu'mineen but at the same time Imam Hussein alayhi salam was an individual to be known to be uh, worshipping Allah subhanahu mm. wa ta'ala when he was yeah. uh, in the masjid or at yeah. home. I think to end there was that there's the one narration that sticks out again the irony of it as well is that I think it was after Safin where one of the prisoners who was tied with the rope mm. um, asked Imam uh, Hussein to undo the rope and uh, he asked permission of his father and he did it and who did it end up being it was Shimon himself and yeah. mm. Imam untied his yeah, ropes his compassion, is, uh, compassion was there yeah. Salam used to help yeah. feed or give water to mm. in the certain individuals and then uh, next you know they're in Karbala yeah, and yeah. they're, they're participating in the looting of thank the tents you. thank you very much uh, thank you to our dear viewers we've reached the end of our show thank you for watching at home uh, on our first episode of this brand new series we do encourage you to please watch the rest of the episode that are coming. We have several topics to discuss and several more episodes to uh, uh, show you. Um, the format of the show dictates that at the end of the show we end with a eulogy uh, as that is common in tradition of the culture of mourning this tragedy. So we're going to ask Brother Ibrahim to end and close the show with a eulogy. 
Um, a poem written by uh, Nuri Sardar, welcoming the crescent of Muharram. The shroud of a familiar month on you beckons, and the new moon's crescent with my blood it darkens. I see a flame in the heart it awakens At the sound of wailing children this heart weakens As approaches the horizon of my ten days the pangs of grief on hearing my name on you praise. Between your eye and your eyelid my body lays. And hither angel of death on my body prays. If by my tragedy your heart it would falter, Oh, Shia, remember me when you sip water. For I was murdered thirsty alone, a stranger. Indeed, my children would refuse water later. For what reason, oh, oh my lover, do your eyes weep? Is it that thoughts call my name whilst my soldiers sleep? Oh, that my flag bearer with no hands lies asleep Whilst fire and men upon my woman's tent seep Whilst fire and men upon my woman's tent seep Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa jalla wa jalla. Thank you. Shukran.